from Ireland and the relationship, the deep relationship between Syria and Ireland. So gold was the first export. But it wasn't an export in sense of organising trade. We're dealing with the transition of uh, hunter-gatherers into agrarian societies. And what the, the Irish Druids, the Cullian, the Cullen, the Cullinan did, the Holly, is that gold represented the knowledge that they possessed. And it is the knowledge that assisted the rest of the world. And the gold associated with these Druids, these Druids, these viziers, these visors, these wizards, is what stuck in the minds of the tribal leaders that turned their tribes into civilizations around the world. So this is the origin of gold. And the guardians of the gold have always been the holly, always. And of course, I've shown in this article one of the most famous uh, demonstrations of this in the recovered wizard hats of the Kulian, although they make no reference to its origin. It's just an anomaly in a museum. Well, from this, we move to a, a, a time that is understood in part when we speak of the Ixos kings, the Hyksos kings of Egypt, who first went to reconquer Ebla and then in the eruptions of the islands of Greece had to escape and found sanctuary in Egypt and re-established uh, government in Egypt and became the Ixos pharaohs. And they were masters at gold, goldsmithing, and none more so than those treasures that were, through some miracle, uh, brought back to life in Tutankhamun, the uh, son of Akhenaten, the son of Moses, the heretic pharaoh that left his throne, that wandered the desert, and that recaptured Ugarit. Well, under the Ixos, uh, there was huge volumes of gold. But of course, in, in the ensuing disasters of the bubonic plague, dated back to the 14th century, and the survivors of the plague, being the followers of Akhenaten, and the recapture of the followers, the pirates of the Nile, the swamp pirates of the Nile, who had been paid by the Ixos not to raid their extraordinary wealth because of the channels created from Zion on the coast to Cairo, Chiro on the Nile, the crescent moon, one of the greatest engineering feats in history that the Menes pirates were paid not to damage the trade. And of course, over time, they became phenomenally wealthy, incredibly lazy, and incredibly greedy. In fact, they became the, the archetype of bankers. They were the first bankers, the first merchants. They did nothing. They did not grow. They did not do any manual labor. They merely took a toll, the ultimate ferryman. When Akhenaten left, it was these swamp pirates who had been paid and served the Ixos loyally, well, semi-loyally for this period, that seized the opportunity. And of course, in their worship of the ram, became the Ramses. Under the Ramses, incompetent as they are, as they were, incompetent, extravagant as they were, with no belief at all but themselves and their wealth, they destroyed Egypt. So by 1260, running out of money, no friends, they decided to hire the biggest mercenary army they could by raiding the tombs of the Ixos and melting down priceless artifacts. And the people they used for that were the Israelites the former leaders, the former court of Akhenaten, the unclean and cursed. And from that point, gold became cursed. It was more than now a religious item. It became a cursed metal. And it has retained those curses of the Ixos, the Kulian, ever since. 
So the Israelites developed their, their own God. They developed the golden calf, the worship of gold itself as their new God in direct defiance of the creator who had abandoned them, who had left them there, who had seen their children slaughtered by the swamp pirates, the prototype bankers, the usurpers, the insane. And so we see the worship of gold for itself the first time in history. And of course that is the G, one of the means of the G in Freemasonry, in the perpetuation of utter madness, in the worshipping of a material as a god. What madness, what stupidity. And yet we find so many of ourselves being beguiled by this, the luster of gold. And we move, move forward now to Rome, an historic time, at the time of Julius Kaiser. And gold had been a, a medium of, of currency well before then. Of course, that was the purpose of the raiding of the tombs by the Ramses and the destroying of Egypt history to feather their own incompetent dream. But there was never a, a destroying of the economies purely on gold. But a historic event took place when Julius Kaiser desperately sought control of the Roman Empire. And he went to the merchant priests of the Temple of Juno and said, give me your wealth so that I can become the greatest consul. I can become a god myself. And they said, yes, we will, if you hand across to us the right to mint the money for the empire. And he did that. And what he did was he helped create the first private central bank and legally, technically, the first example of lawful money. That's what lawful money is. In fact, Juno uh, Monitor, from where we get the word money anyway, lawful money is Juno Monitor. It is the concept that the gold is not owned by the public. It's owned by a private few. We only get to use it. We only get to lease it. And then periodically, they will cause a... Um, shortage and they will destroy the empire at their choosing and that's of course the civil war and the use of uh, private central banks and the use of gold were put in place ever since so now with the success of showing that private banks could control the gold and private banks could take the wealth of the public and, and put it in the hands of a few these these Swamp pirates, now aided and abetted by another generation, the land pirates, the land bar uh, bandits, known as the Khazars, as the Mongols, from uh, Mongolia and from the Asian steeps. This is the origin of the Askenazi. This is the origin of the Venetians. They're not Semitic. If someone says, talking about this as anti-Semitic, tell them, just laugh. These people are no more Palestinian than someone born in Africa. They have no DNA at all associated with Palestine. Not a drop. That's why I call them the false menache, because they pretend to be Semitic when they're not. These people that run these banks, these people that stand up culturally and call themselves different names, these people that are planning to destroy the world this year and at this point they are on track to do it because of what we are doing to help them unwittingly have nothing to do with Palestine except they have the same madness of the swamp pirates of the Nile shared by being land pirates as well so we see a pattern occurring then that a form of currency based on paper is then usurped and gold is returned and any imbalance in the system is wiped out. The gold is then used to stabilise. The gold is then withdrawn. The paper continues and the banker family stay in control. And they have done this like clockwork. 1720 in Amsterdam, Germany. 1790 in France, 
1860s in America, 1930s in the world, and they are doing it again right this second. And how do they do it? Well, money is a fiction. Money is a concept. You could have clamshells underwriting money. You could have, well, we had salt in a period a thousand years ago underwriting money. You could have beans underwriting money. Instead, the bankers want gold. Why? Because they've spent thousands of years collecting it up. It is their metal. It carries the history that we've dealt with, and we'll talk about some of its dark witchcraft aspects in a moment. So how are they doing it? They're doing it by contacting key people in the truth movement and spinning them lies and spinning them along and doing exactly what their forebears did in the 1930s, in the 1860s, in the 1790s and 1720s. Exactly. Line for line, word for word, piece by piece, we are being played exactly the same tune and we're dancing exactly the same way. Utter madness. We have learned nothing and yet we call ourselves the truth movement. Nothing have we learned. Because the loudest voice supporting the banker's plan, the Foundation X, the Vatican, the very people that have destroyed this world and enslaved this world, the strongest voice on the planet at this moment for lawful currency is the truth movement. Complete and utter madness. Well, it gets worse. Because not just doing the service of the bankers, they added another dimension to gold in 1543. And it deserves a mention before we move on to a whole range of other subjects we want to talk about tonight. And that is gold as a medium for the imprisonment of salvaged souls. Now, I won't get into too much of this because it does require reading and there are plenty of other texts that we've used. The pronouncements have done this. There's a whole range of areas that we've done this. But just to encapsulate, this is the, the logic. The Venetians had had it with the Medicis from Florence who then were from Genoa, their competitors, their arch-parasite competitors, all parasites who saw the Holy See, the Roman cult, as a gold mine, excuse the pun, for making money. So the Venetians came up with an idea. They would create a brand new church, they would create a brand new order, they would create a brand new structure and it would be based on a military order and no one would take their control again. And they conveyed the power, the real power of the Roman cult out of the Vatican and into the company of Jesus, the Society of Jesus, the Jesuits, and then placed it brilliantly in London and then went out of their way to create the impression that the Church of England was a breakaway from the Vatican, which of course it was because the Church of England was in fact the conveyance of the power of the Vatican away from it. It's the Church of the Jesuits. And many Jesuits died just to make sure that that fiction was maintained. And then later, they took a lot of that apparatus into America. The most powerful court in the world is in Pennsylvania. The most powerful chancery in the world is in Delaware. The most powerful treasury in the world is in Washington. All apparatus that was conveyed from the Vatican to London, from London to America. Including the sacred penitentiary. Now, if you think of a penitentiary being a place that is a prison of souls, you're spot on. That's exactly what a penitentiary is, a prison of souls. But it was something more. It was a place to store very valuable items. How could you imagine a prison to be storing a, very, a place of very valuable items? They certainly don't treat prisoners as if they're valuable. Well, the flesh isn't valuable.